Welcome everybody to the Recovering Your Business webinar brought to you by Wells Fargo in partnership with the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. We want to remind everyone that this webinar is being recorded and we're also going live on our USHC Facebook page. This webinar is part of the R3 Bootcamp webinar series where subject matter experts and small business owners will share important information and resources that will help you retool, recover, and restore your business. For those who didn't have a chance to attend the first webinar about retooling your business, we're happy to share that we'll send all registered participants an email to that link, as well as any other resources shared today. So also please note that you can enter a drawing for a $25 gift card by completing our one minute survey that will be included in that email. So thank you in advance for providing your feedback as it's very important to keep bringing to you content that's relevant to your business. We also want to encourage all attendees to please submit any questions to our panelists via the Q&A box. We will try to answer as many questions as we can throughout the webinar and also at the end of it. Before starting this webinar, I would love to introduce our CEO and president at the US Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Ramiro Cavazos. Welcome, Ramiro. Thank you, Laura. Muchísimas gracias a ti por tu gran trabajo. We're uh, honored to have you on our team uh, at the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I want to welcome everyone that's joined us uh, on Facebook and other social media and that has registered for this program. My name is Ramiro Cavazos, and I have the privilege and honor to uh, work for 5 million Latino-owned businesses that represent a collective economic impact of $800 billion to the US economy. We have 61 million Hispanics in this nation. One out of every five people self-identifies as, as a Latino and a Latina. And the future economy and its rebuilding will be driven by the economic success of our small business owners. Latinas were building their businesses at six times the national rate uh, in this country before the pandemic. And so now's the time in this moment that we're all living in to rebuild our economy and use the tools that uh, our corporate leaders and our small business owners and our elected officials can provide us. A big part of our success, uh, as you all know, is the collective leadership of more than 260 Hispanic chambers of commerce that are part of our national network that is so powerful. It is powerful because each of them inspires us with their creativity, their hard work, their advocacy. They're an economic oasis in their communities from Honolulu, to Honolulu Hawaii, to Rhode Island, from of course, uh, Seattle, Washington. Uh, we have the mayor of Burien with us today, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor Mata, all the way down to Southern Florida, deep South Texas, all the way up to Wisconsin. Uh, we are everywhere in this nation, uh, in all 50 states, in Puerto Rico, and uh, a big part of our history has been built by Latinos and Latinas who uh, were raised here. 80% of those 61 million uh, are native uh, born, and then 20% are, of course, uh, like the history of this country, moved here as quickly as they could uh, to build this American dream that is a nation's, the world's largest economy even after COVID, but a part of rebuilding will require education and information. The United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors is chaired by Alice Rodriguez with JP Morgan Chase. And we have small business owners and great corporate leaders, and of course, chamber leaders. We're honored today to have a great corporate leader in, of course, Raul Suarez. And we also have Betty Mineta, who's on our board as our board secretary. Uh, and so before I give this back to Laura, I want to thank each of you for your tenacity, your discipline. Don't give up. If you don't get that first contract, keep, keep fighting. Learn how to uh, get your proposals ready. And as a chamber, thank you for the work you do. And of course, as a corporate leader, I want to thank Wells Fargo. The Wells Fargo uh, Corporation has stood by us every step of the way during this pandemic, before and beyond. And I wanna thank them for their sponsorship for this R3 seminar series that we put together. So with that, muchísimas gracias a todos on behalf of our board of directors and our members and our chamber network. 
uh, it's my honor to continue to work hard to rebuild our economy, paying attention to what matters most, our small businesses. So thank you for joining us today. We look forward to future webinars. And with that, thank you, Laura, for your hard work. And I'll kick this back to you uh, and get the program going with these great speakers. Thanks to each of our speakers and to each of you that have joined us. Laura, muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much, Ramiro. I'm very excited, in fact, today because we have a great lineup of speakers uh, to give you uh, guidance on how to recover your business. Um, we will start this very dynamic conversation by presenting our great panelists today. And at the same time, they will also take this opportunity to give you a little background about themselves so you can get to know them better. So let's start with Betty Manetta. She is president and CEO of Argent Associates and a board member at the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Laura, and gracias, Ramiro, uh, for the kind introduction. So as, uh, as Laura said, I am president and CEO of Origin Associates, and I do sit on the board of the USHCC and former chair of the Greater Dallas Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. But uh, on the side note, I also sit on the board of the DFW Minority Supplier Development Council, where I am the Minority Business Enterprise Input Committee Chair. Uh, I sit on the Women's Business Council Southwest, where I'm on their executive committee. I sit on the board of the Tech Titans. Um, that's uh, an organization uh, dedicated to technology uh, in Richardson, Texas. And I also am a part of Seton Hall's Leadership Advisory Council, where I mentor young women. Um, so uh, that's that's what I do on the side. Uh, my, my daytime job is, uh, as you know, President and CEO of Argent Associates, and Argent is a technology-based company. We design, engineer, and develop edge computing devices with IoT embedded platform driving operational efficiencies that accelerate uh, such transformational engagements such as smart and efficient buildings, cutting edge technologies that create um, rich content for engaging and enhancing customer experience for smart city solutions. So it's a pleasure to be here and I look forward to our conversation with Raul. Gracias. Thank you so much, Betty. Um, I really appreciate you sharing your background. This is fantastic. That's now you understand why I'm so excited to be talking to all these great speakers today. Next, I would like to introduce Jimmy Mata. He is the president of Aora Construction and also mayor of Burien, Washington. Welcome, Jimmy. Oh, uh, Jimmy, you need to unmute yourself. Ahora sí, there technology. You, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> bueno, pues buenos días y buenas tardes a todos uh, a través de los Estados Unidos. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, not only as a CEO of my company, but also as a, a political representative of my town of Burien, Washington, right outside of Seattle, where about 54,000 residents. I also want to, you know, give a little bit of my background. You know, my mom and dad uh, settled the United States of America in 1974. Uh, they came to this country. I say settle because that's what the word was before. But now, since we're, you know, undocumented and some some instances illegal immigrants. Uh, my parents came from Guatemala, so that's really my ancestor, uh, my ancestry. And uh, so I have uh, three sisters. Um, you know, one of them is a teacher in the United States of America. The other one was uh, working for the Department of Labor and Industries. And then I have a, a sister that loves singing, just opened up her construction company called Momento Construction. And then, you know, I have, I have also two, two children. My son is 24. Uh, you know, I've seen his journey as a union carpenter. He went through a union apprenticeship program, got his business degree at night. And then my daughter is 18. She's going to college this year. Um, and I sit on a couple of boards, right? I sit on Latino Civic Alliance, uh, the National Minority Contractors Association, Padres Activos al Futuro, Empresarios Unidos. And it's an honor to be here today to have this discussion about where we're going as a nation, where we're going as Latinos, where we're going as the biggest minority, majority, soon to be in the United States of America. Muchas gracias, un placer estar aquí. Thank you so much, Jimmy. I really appreciate you sharing all that personal also background, which really makes this conversation even more engaging, really. Um, but last but not least, Raul Suarez Rodriguez. He is the director of Global Economic Inclusion and Supplier Diversity at Merck, as well as one of the pickup co-chairs at the USHC and the moderator of today's discussion. 
the stage is yours, Raúl. <laughs> Thank you so much. Gracias, Laura. Es un placer. Buenas tardes, buenos días a todos. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Raúl Suárez Rodríguez, and as Laura said, I lead the Global Economic Inclusion and Supply Diversity at Merck. Uh, global economic inclusion and supply diversity, what is that? So we are the epicenter of Merck procurement activities, creating opportunities, economic opportunities by procuring products and services from minority, women, LGBT, disability, and better and home businesses. So it's my pleasure to be here today with these amazing panelists. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself because I think it's, it's important. We are in familia. So I was born and raised in Cuba. I immigrated 20 years ago, so um, you know uh, I'm pretty new here, right, right? So, but I'm excited to be uh, leading uh, this conversation, which I think is really important, right? So we're going to be talking about recovering your business. So for those uh, Hispanic business enterprises that I joined here today, uh, I think you're going to get a lot out of it. And we're going to take it very, um, you know, in a, a very casual way. We want to make sure that you hear, you know, real stories uh, that can resonate to you, and hopefully you get some tips on how you could actually apply uh, to continue to, you know, on your journey as you try to, to grow your business. Thank you so much, Raul. Uh, this is great. And that's, that's what makes it more engaging today. Um, this is gonna be a very engaging conversation. Feel free to ask questions throughout the presentation. Again, I wanna thank uh, our sponsor, Wells Fargo, for making this serious possible. Um, as I mentioned, we are Retool. Your business webinar was very successful. Everybody liked it. So no worries, I'm gonna be sharing that, that video with you uh, on the email that I'm gonna be sending after this webinar. And with that, so let's start talking about our, the first topic of, of this conversation, Raul. I'm just gonna leave it to you to, to start the conversation. And I think we're gonna keep it in this gallery uh, right view yes. uh, so that everybody can, can see uh, because I know all the speakers will, will give their input. At, at, at some awesome, point. awesome. So are we ready? Are we ready? Because this is going we're to ready. be ready. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> so, <It's> ready. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. So as Laura said, so this is recovering your business. So we're going to be talking on three main points today. One is targeting your reopening plans, right? How you had pivot, how you had implementing tools to really, you know, reopen your business if you had to be closed due to the pandemic. That's item number one. Item number, number two, your workforce planning, right? How you were preparing to, you know, manage the workforce in this, you know, difficult situation. And then lastly would be what type of strategies are you implementing to really drive your business forward? Are those type of strategies to gain more customers, uh, to create a strategic alliances, to create a joint venture, to even, you know, if you're thinking of partnering up and, you know, you know, this bet this best in your business to create a new business. So that's that's the topic today. So I'm gonna start with targeting the reopening, right? So and I'm gonna go uh, to you, Betty. And, you know, I want you to tell me a little bit about uh, how your company has been able to uh, create a safe and a clean environment for the employees to return to work. It's my understanding that your business had been affected like everybody else. And, you know, you had essential workers. So you had to really get something in place to make sure that when you reopen, they were safe for them. So can you tell us more? Sure, Raul. Thank you. So, yeah, um, we... You know, we have uh, installers uh, that work in New York City and, um, you know, they were essential and we received special letters for them to go into the city to continue to work. So we do infrastructure work. So things inside where Jimmy is outside, you know, and inside probably, but we're mostly infrastructure, uh, cabling, um, antennas, Wi-Fi, uh, all kinds of uh, things that go inside the building. So uh, we never had, a, we never did shut down. What we did shut down sometimes was the office because, you know, we have warehouses and so we have to continuously um, send products to our customers. So we could not shut down, but we had to make the environment safe. And so what we did, obviously, um, we had to, uh, we installed uh, thermal cameras that measures your, your temperature. Uh, we had to uh, provide uh, everything had to be cleaned and disinfected. Uh, we put in special purifiers in our offices in every single room that, uh, and these purifiers can do, um, you know, so many uh, 
square feet. So you have to put them in strategic places where you have people. Everyone's kind of uh, separated. So that was never an issue. Um, and then we had to change some things. As you've seen in many uh, stores, you no longer have to, uh, we couldn't have um, community type snacks and things like that. So everything is individually wrapped. And, and so we continue to maintain that and it, it worked well. It worked really well. The other thing that I think is important is that our customers demand demanded uh, that we have a disaster recovery plan. And that was done several years ago. Uh, I think the first time we had to put a plan together was when we had the swine flu and Legionnaire's disease. So back then our customers uh, wanted to know, hey, since we're managing all their inventory and products in our warehouse, uh, if, I ha if I have needs, how are you going to deliver those when you don't have employees? So we really had to have a plan, a backup plan. We also at 9-11, as you may recall, we had a lot of equipment that were needed to um, to send into the city. And so um, all those things required us to have a strategic plan. Yeah. So we had backup servers, we had uh, things off site. Um, and so I think that really prepared us for the pandemic that we experienced last year. So um, I think if, if nothing else, it's always to be pre, uh, proactive rather, rather than reactive. And I think, uh, you know, as part of our ISO and, and certifications that we have, we had to have a plan and um, it's bode very well for us. So those are, I think, the key nuggets um, that, uh, and, and of course you have to give PPP, uh, PPE equipment to all our employees. So I, I gave them all uh, masks, gloves, uh, safety goggles. They all got trained on the CDC guidelines. We have it posted all over the place. So um, knock on wood, no one got COVID. So um, we're, we're happy for that. Well, I shouldn't say not everyone, but well, that's a later topic. So far, so good. So far, so good. So far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good. So, yeah. so Jimmy, I go to you now, and you know, you're totally in different industry, right? And perhaps your industry has been active, right, during this. So, can you tell us more? Um, you know how you know your plan has been for if you close to reopen. <clears throat> well, good question. You know, it's. Uh... You know, I've never went through a pandemic or any kind of scare. So, you know, new, my business has been open for about five years. And so, you know, we've been in the growth mode. Um, so one of the things is, primeramente, is figuring out que lo que estaba diciendo el gobernador, because he put out his proclamation. Dije, bueno, que es esto? I can't even understand que lo que dice este guy. Like, you know, these are words from, you know, uh, doctors and, you know, uh, professionals and educated individuals. So dije, no, pues, I'm going to go find a ver que, who can speak English better than I can para que, pa que me puedan explicar lo que está pasando acá. Well, then what happened is, Ya miramos que, oh, we got a bike, que tenemos que comprar este hand sanitizers, gloves, uh, este, uh, para chequear la temperatura, thermostat, uh, thermometer. And so with that day, we went like everywhere because we had to open up. The governor had said essential workers going back to work, construction is reopening, and we had El Gacho's restaurant that we, we had a contract. So we can't find thermometers. We're going everywhere, everywhere, a whole day, the second day. And then my son goes to uh, Walgreens and he says he sees two thermometers there and he goes back and tells the store there, hey, I see two thermometers. He goes, no, we sold out thermometers a long time ago. She goes, no, I see them. They're in there. And so they come in, they open it up and ya estamos contento. The whole team's going, yes, we got thermometers, right? So then it's like, okay, well now what are we going to do with the hand sanitizers? Where do we buy it? Uh, masks, where do we buy masks? We start calling, nobody knows. And then we end up, uh, and then it had to be a certain mask. And then we're going, oh my. And so then I make some calls. Yeah, I can't buy 10 masks. I can't buy 20 masks. I got to buy 2,500 masks. It's $2,400. So to reopen, it was $5,000. I'm going, híjole, ¿dónde me lo voy a conseguir, right? So it was a lot of, hey, este jefa, o hey, pao. <laughs> you know, could you loan me some money? And so we were able to open up because what had happened is everything closed. So we were in that cycle that we were supposed to get paid. And so bills are still going on. It doesn't matter. COVID's going on. And I'm like, where's my payment? Oh, I'm sorry. Because of COVID, due to COVID, due to COVID, due to COVID, due to COVID. Well, oh, yeah. So we finally got everything we could. We opened up. ¿Y qué pasa? Bueno, pues, the language barriers. Our people don't understand it. Stuff hasn't been translated into Spanish. You know, están asustados. We're trying to break it down. We're, and then I, I go, hey, pues, este staff, like, what do we do? So then each contractor, each uh, end user has different regulations because they're getting information from CDC, from the county, from the federal government, you know, federal, state, county, city. Uh, and we finally got somebody just focused on that to make sure that we understood what we were doing. 
And on top of that, you know, we felt that we were, we were getting hammered a little bit more. Um, so I said, you know what? I want a COVID card in every car. And aquí, si la razón de las personas no se van a mantener limpias es porque no quieren, not necessarily because we don't have the equipment there. But it was a, you know, it's been a learning curve. Um, we've had to shut down four times. Um, and because, you know, we had some scares of COVID. And so it's all been, you know, even though we got PPP dollars, which, hey, le doy gracias a Dios que el gobierno federal los dio algo. Uh, because if not, uh, I don't know if we'd be here today, you know, that was able to help offset the cost of COVID, printing of, uh, of uh, flyers, uh, making sure that I'm getting the stuff translated because the federal government didn't tra translate anything. The state government didn't translate anything. The county was trying to figure it out because we were the first in the United States to see COVID, you know, hit our community. So, uh, but you know, I have to tell you, it's made us strong. We know how to research. We know when there's subjective information because information is just not clear. Okay, what is it? What's clear and cut on COVID? And it just wasn't clear. And so, but I feel, I feel comfortable that my staff know, at least knows where to go look up the information. And, uh, and, then it, and then when we get into workforce, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about kind of what we confronted when it come down to workforce. So th th those are great. So can you elaborate a little bit more on those challenges that you were facing, you know, based on, you know, getting that PPE, PPP loans, right? So can you, can you elaborate more? Because I know that some of our businesses really got affected to really get access to those. So what did you do? Because I know it's a second round now. So any tips, any other type of things that you want to share with those that are listening today uh, that you think will be a benefit from them? Well, Mina, este, I always rely on people that are smarter, uh, that can write better than I can, right? So I had to figure out, okay, que voy a hacer? The federal government's not responding. People aren't responding. If the name is uh, Evita Vasquez uh, de la Torre, you know, you know that they're going to give her the phone number and they're going to give her an email to ask for information. But, you know, reality is I, you know, I was able to use some of my staff that, you know, my staff is really diverse. So I have white staff, I have Latino staff, I have Asian staff. So I said, hey, get on the phone. So just the last name, you know, Hope uh, sounds very, very, very well. So she just started getting on the phone, making calls, knocking on doors. And then it's like, oh, we have to have all this, you know, documentation. Yo dije, no, hombre. So what helped me and helped the business that I've helped was to make sure that number one, they were gathering the information. They understood the information, you know, their taxes. Uh, and so uh, we were able to actually benefit from all five different, you know, we got two grants that we don't have to pay back with an SBA loan. We got the PPP money, but that helped us actually, you know, grow our business, which is interesting in, in COVID uh, in just one of the most devastating times in society and in the world, uh, our business was able to flourish. We, we moved into our new office. As you see me sitting here during COVID in June of last year, we had to do a lot of the work, but uh, one of the challenges was is the, uh, the, you know, unemployment, people were getting an unemployment benefit. So I couldn't get my carpenters to come back. So that was very devastating. The generals were being okay, but at the end of the day, we have contracts we got to fulfill. Yeah. And Raul, I want to add to what Jimmy said, because we got PPP funds too. And that's why you couldn't lay off anybody, even if uh, you wanted to, uh, because that would, uh, you know, that would impact the, the, the grant uh, to be allowed to keep it instead of having to pay it back. But one of the things that I think uh, is key for uh, companies is make sure you have a relationship with your bank. You have to have a great relationship. And, and I know that big banks um, service big companies, right? Um, however, uh, there are micro banks, smaller banks that we were able to share with our um, with our community that were willing to give out PPP funds uh, to smaller companies that were hurting, right? And so um, I, that's the that's the must thing. And even for this round, that will be critical. And I think in this round, you have to have a 25% loss or something in order to be eligible again. So um, I think that you know, talk to your uh, to your bank. Go to a small bank that will sit down with you. Go to the SBA. Go to the USHCC, NMSDC. Uh, everybody's doing programs now to identify, and, and we have uh, data both in English and in Spanish. So um, I think that the key is to make sure that, and like Jimmy said, have all your records. Make sure you keep them, and because that's going to be important now for round two. So um, you know the d data is everything. So uh, that's my coaching too and advice, uh, first and foremost. 
with the banks. Yeah, Raul, Raul con eso, este, you know, it's interesting with us because, you know, I, I don't hide anything. I'm pretty transparent and open. Uh, so, you know, I went through a divorce and I went through bankruptcy. And so credit was very difficult. And so I had been banking with Bank of America. Que les quedamos debiendo dinero en la bankruptcy. I mean, what can I say? You know, you know, there was a recession in 2010 and that's what happened. Divorces. So what ended up happening is, uh, you know, I go to a, a, a community lending place where I'm paying a 9% interest on my loan. Y yo dije, no, hombre, ¿qué me va a estar dando PPP money, Bank of America, no, hombre, Big Corporate America? I was shocked. You know, I qualified. I was, oh, my, I can't believe that a big bank just took me on. Like, you know, because we know that the, the number of Black and Latinos across our country, I mean, we don't really make that much money even when we come out of trying to start our own business. Pero yo les digo that uh, what you, you know, you never know, right? So do the process of the paperwork. If you can't do the paperwork, then look for someone that can help you with the paperwork. La otra cosa, let's not forget we have 11 million, if not, probably more, but at least the count before Donald Trump was elected, we had 11 million undocumented uh, people in this country. They have been dying. They're devastated. They have not been able to get PPP money. I'm glad that the, some of the states where we have more influence as Latinos, where we vote, where we're not going to take it, uh, we're able to give some money to some of those micro businesses that needed it, right? So I just want to say that even though PPP is available, uh, you know, the situation that we're on as Latinos with immigration in this country is devastating in our community. Not only is COVID killing us in bigger numbers, but we're also being affected as business. You know, those, those are great points. And actually, you know, Betty, you jump in because I was just going to, I was just going to talk about, I asked Jimmy if he had any relationship, but he was able to articulate that without me asking the question where, you know, where he went uh, and found that, you know, Bank of America was able to give, you know, him that PPP. So, but what, one of the things that I will say also is keep in mind, all these banks, they do have supply diversity program. As yeah. you being, as you being a minority, Hispanic, whatever your classification is, you know, go and ask the question. So we're, we're here uh, to serve as your access point and we advocate an influence on your behalf. If I was running, you know, the Bank of America supply diversity program and Jimmy came to me and said, Hey, Raul, I'm having issues to get the PPP. Any guidance you could offer? And I'm pretty sure that I would, I would go above, you know, above and beyond to make sure that he gets the answer that he needs. So don't forget to tap in those resources that are available to you as a, as a small Hispanic minority business enterprise. Because I think, you know, even Betty was saying, you know, USACC is a great resource. They are putting a website, you know, uh, documentation both in English and Spanish. So, you know, our Latino businesses can really benefit from that information, right? So they can get access to that information. So I think that that's important. I, I know Betty also said about NMSCC, they have been doing a lot of programming uh, in regards to, you know, the second set of PPP, as well as, you know, listing some of those, um, you know, micro banks available um, in the marketplace. So I, I'm forgetting, but, you know, if I remember before, um, the end of this presentation, I would type in in the chat the name of the bank that was actually uh, not long ago on a panel discussion during NMSCC that they are supporting a lot of those because I saw a question coming through about do you have a list of those micro banks? Um, so I owe you that by the end. If not, I'll let Laura send that over to you guys. So, yes. uh, Betty, I want to go back to you because I think you said something really, really important and critical. And this may not apply to every business that is attending here, but you said something that, you know, it, it is important, depending on the category of service you provide, to have in place. When you are setting any type of contract with a large corporation similar to mine, right, is that recovery of land. So any tips, any type of resources that we could share with the audience today on how can, you know, they can get that in place? Because I think it's important, right? If you're touching technology, that is critical, Right. So, right. because you have to have a contingency on how you're going to operate, forget about the pandemic. If a disaster comes in, so you know, how are you going to continue to keep that company in business? So, can you talk to us a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, so, I, I think that there are plenty of tools out there now uh, that, that helps uh, uh, small businesses. I know the SBA has a, a, a bunch, a lot of uh, in their library, uh, different uh, types of tools, right? Um, you know, 
how to develop a um, a re disaster recovery plan. Uh, what are the key things you need to know? Um, I know that uh, there are companies that do that. A lot of our MBEs, our HBEs, have the capability of offering that to uh, you know uh, a templates, if you will. But but um, I think that uh, you know if you wanted help and it's free help, score. S-C-O-R-E. SCORE is Senior Citizens of, I forget what it stands for, but these are senior leaders in the business and they're usually in every single state um, hosted by universities. Some, sometimes they're in uh, local colleges like, um, you know, in, in New Jersey, be Union County College, uh, that have a SCORE department that are retired senior citizens, senior executives, and they will help you develop a plan. They help you do business plan. That's how I started my company uh, 22 years ago. I went to SCORE because I had to write a business plan. Now I came from corporate America. So, um, you know, I said, okay, now I have to write a business plan. And they helped me because I was in the logistics, that side of the house. And so they were very helpful and they find you the right person. The, the, the executive that I had assigned to me was a former executive of um, Office Depot. Okay, so he knew about supply chain logistics. So that's a free uh, area that you can go to. Uh, like I said, SBA has library of different types of documents that you can take the templates out. And I'd be happy to share what we have. Um, you know, I'll take out anything that's proprietary, but um, you know, I think that it's so important. Uh, and, and I think you have to have it now. If you're doing business with large companies or even small, uh, even for your employees, you know, to me, okay. that's key. You have to, uh, you have to have the technology. Um, now it's so much si simpler with, uh, you know, all these different documents. Like when you said retool that that retool uh, video. Uh, once you mm -hmm. see it, there's documents, you know, for sharing data and things like that. So um, I would suggest that you go back to the retooling one. And certainly, I will provide um, information uh, in the chat as well. Raul, did that answer your question? Was that help? It, it does, Betty. Thank you so much. And also, Laura has put the the link to the SCORE website so they can they can have access to that because I think that's critical. And also, I had typed in the name of the bank that I was referring to and also the PPP presentation for NMSEC. Um, thank you, uh, Peniel, for uh, putting that link in there. And I also put the YouTube video so you, uh, you guys can benefit from watching that again. Yeah, and one thing uh, I wanted to add, I'm sorry, uh, on the um, the disaster recovery, there is uh, another place too that you can go to. Uh, if you look on anything for um, quality, uh, you know, developing, it's always out there, especially for companies that do ISO and, and things like that. So that's another um, area that you can um, pursue. And sometimes, you know, there's EY and others that'll have McKinsey and company, they'll have out there uh, a lot of literature as well. I always like to look around and then I take the best, what we always call in our industry, R&D, rip off and duplicate, right? So that's a beautiful way to be. <laughs> Did everybody got that? Is not research and development. It's yeah. read up and duplicate, okay? <laughs> so that's what with that, right, Betty? <laughs> right. That's right. So, so Jimmy, back to you, because um, you said something that really struck me was about PPP and not being able to, to, to find them when you needed them the most. And, you know, I, I, what, what are your thoughts around that collaboration among, among minority businesses? Because I think that was a missed opportunity during this, um, this pandemic where, you know, there are suppliers that pivoted to really provide PPP, but they, they forgot about you guys, you know, the same type of community. So any, you know, um, input, any insights around that? Your thoughts about that? Yeah. So, uh, you know, with us, you know, here in Bury in Washington, a lot of the Latino business got together and uh, we knew that we couldn't get a billboard by ourselves so we all pulled our money together we bought a billboard and it says empresarios unidos and it has all the latino restaurants and you know my construction business a plumbing business so that was one way where we came together to pull our money the other one is si no los educan well we better get it and we better do it ourselves no pues ahí como pudimos yo con mi inglés aquel con su español so we started having zoom meetings and that was interesting because no sabían cómo hacer el zoom no no que esto no you know comenzamos los pleitos ahí 
And uh, people wanted to kind of like, we knew we couldn't meet, but we want to kind of meet. And so we ended up saying, okay, ¿qué es lo que necesitamos hacer to make sure that we survive this, right? So we started promoting our restaurants. And, you know, Burien is known for foodie paradise. We wanted to make sure that other businesses were uh, buying from other businesses. And so that's how we were able to, you know, be able to survive because a lot of the, you know, because I'd say, oye, ¿por qué no agarro el PPP? You know, oh, my staff can help you with that. Pues que no podemos, Jimmy, no tenemos seguro. Y dije, oh. Y dije, Entonces, that's when I started seeing, no, hombre, I started seeing how my people, my Latino people that, you know, uh, first of all, the system is not in place for them, so it's hard to understand. Yo que hablo inglés, a venir, le entiendo. Entonces, este, what, what we end up doing is, okay, let's figure out the things that are most, that are going to affect business most. Where can we buy masks? Where can we buy hand sanitizers? Si no podemos agarrar PPP, can we push the state to set up a budget? Can we talk to other elected officials in the counties? Can we look at uh, philanthropy money? Because that's the one thing that I didn't see, right? Like, you know, look, America is, is it, we as Latinos, we spent $2.5 trillion as a GDP. So the reality is, why are we not being protected? Why are we not being taken care of? There's 850,000 Latinos turning 18 for the next two decades. 50% are dropping out of school. Like that's a national security issue. It's not like our Latinos are undocumented and they're gonna go, they, you know, they, these are our children. This is the future of America. And so, you know, one of the things that we did is how can we make sure that people were surviving? So, todos los, los, las tiendas comenzamos a hacer bolsas de frijol, de arroz. Everybody got together and, you know, and then in, in closing with my thought, Christmas came around, you know, and uh, this conversation I just had with my mom, Oye, ma, ya Guatemala, do they have a Santa Claus? Is there Christmas? No, mijo, allá somos tres reyes magos. I said, oh, so that means that I adopted this in America. This is like, and so we had like 20, 32 children que no tenían juguetes. And it's 24 uh, hours before Christmas. Y me llaman los padres activos al futuro, no, que tenemos 34 niños, no tienen juguetes. Y como le voy a hacer? So I called the city, me mandan una lista de 50 hojas para que comience a ser llamada. Le dije, no, para el tiempo que hago estas llamadas, se me va a pasar las 24 hours. So, I pick up the phone y le digo a los empresarios, niños, oye, en este, mire, tenemos 34 niños del pueblo, they don't, have, they don't have toys, like every child should have a toy. And so, dijo, no te preocupes, Jimmy. Yo digo, yo pongo 200, el otro, yo pongo 300, yo pongo 200. And so, everybody, we're able to, con la colectiva, we're able to get $800. We decorated the outside. We had a... a one of the kids dijo que quería ver, because we said we're going to have a Latino Santa Claus. And one of the kids go, no, I want the real Santa Claus. Why don't we got on the white Santa Claus and, you know, the, Santa, the, the, the wife. And so vinimos y le dieron su gift. And so you could see the smile. Pero, and that's why when we talk to the media and we talk to people, look, we can't sit around and wait for people to help us, you know, because we have different challenges in our community. Language, you know, we're at different places in our businesses. Like right now, I'm very fortunate that I'm able to have the staff that I need to be able to compete. Uh, with what they say, the big boys, right? So, so you didn't see the necessity. I hope I got to you the root of your question. Yeah, no, thank you for thank you for that, and I and I, and I love to hear that community that you guys were able to create within within your within your within your your community, right? A community within a community where you were able to to fulfill the needs of you know that communication barrier, that access to information, that access to the right supply. So I think that 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 that's beautiful to hear, right? Uh, how you guys went above and beyond to really you know. Uh, build that community, support that community. So, Betty, anything else that you want to add in terms of PPE? Because I know <clears throat> there's a speculations that it may be another round and, you know, we may be running out of supplies. So, any type of suggestions, advice that you have? Yeah, um, we have a e marketplace both at the Women's Council and now at NMSDC. And so, uh, you can buy PPE products through. Uh, some of our MBEs and WBEs. Uh, that's one place that you can go to. Um, I would highly recommend that uh, companies make sure that they have enough stock um, just in case uh, there is a surge. But um, uh, obviously we got into it because we are a business partner with a company called Granger. Um, so we are, uh, we resell a lot of their products. We They have a whole new uh, platform for minority companies that are business partners with them. And so um, we had our own. Uh, plus we partnered with other companies that, you know, they were construction companies or companies like Jimmy's that can make the plastic shields. So, um, and so we were able to, um, you know, assist uh, some of the restaurants and some of the um, offices with these plastic shields way at the onset so that they could open 
up. And now you're starting to see restaurants starting to put those up because, you know, in New Jersey, we're dying. <laughs> you know, these restaurants are dying. And to Jimmy's point, most of the workers are there, not all, but most of them are undocumented and they can't collect unemployment. And you see them and, and it breaks your heart. Señora, por favor, si tiene cualquier cosa, hacer, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll wash windows, I'll clean your house, you know, because they don't have anything. To, to help them. So um, that was one thing that the USHCC took on and, and Jennifer uh, Rodriguez from our, our board uh, in Philadelphia experienced the same thing. So all the chambers are trying to collaborate and work together to help some of these, uh, these restaurant owners knowing that their employees um, are not being, uh, and, and they're not working either. So um, it's, uh, it's sad because we're still at 25%. We don't, we're not at full capacity yet. So we're still on shutdown mode here. And that, that makes it very difficult for these companies to survive. Yeah, definitely, indeed. Uh, before we move into our second you know, topic, which is the workforce planning, which I think right now uh, is a great segue to, to that based on what you just said, uh, Betty, is there any questions uh, from the audience that, you know, that you want to ask around um, your reopening plans, things that are on your mind that, you know, would like to add, you know, Jimmy or Betty before we jump into the second, the second segment of the session. You're talking to me, Raul, or are you talking no, to the audience? To the audience. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. So th there's a question around if we have any updates regarding, you know, when the second round of PPPs will be going out from Wells Fargo. Uh, I think that's a follow up that I will let um, Laura take on um, as, you know, uh, as she could check with them. Um, you know, th there was another point that, you know, creating, you know, co-ops among Hispanic, among minorities. So that way, you know, you could get, you know, better discounts when you're trying to procure, you know, the PPP that is needed for your business. That's an excellent point. And I and, and, and would love to see more of that. I mean, what Jim is doing in his hometown is something to be, um, to set as an example that many others should be doing. Uh, we don't see that a lot. And, and you know, it, it just takes one person to bring everybody together. I think, you know, I will say yes, I will promote that by not, you know, by any means, like, you know, that co-op, that, you know, uh, collaboration to really survive in, in a way, it, it will be critical, right? So I don't see, so any, any words around businesses that had their loan for giving up at this point, Did you know, you guys know? Uh, their loan has was, been forgiven, is yeah, that what the question? Up to this point. I, I think so. I, I, you know, go ahead, Jimmy. It's the 50,000 and 150,000. You know, my loan was 375,000. So that's what I was concerned. That's another thing you don't know. Cause you know, I'm getting these emails from the bank. So I call them, oh, well, don't worry. That's that's right. not an email you have to worry about because we haven't got to the bigger loans yet because we still got to work with IRS to figure out the rules of IRS to be able to do your taxes for the end of the year. And then with the payroll tax, you know, suppose it was a favor that still hasn't really, you know, come to figuring out how we're going to deal with it when it comes to payroll. Who's, who's going to be in charge of that tax at the end of the day? Is it going to be the worker? Is it going to be the employer? Uh, because you were able to give those tax breaks uh, for the, you know, the, 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 the stimulus package and then there was another supposed stimulus, stimulus package but right now if it's 150 to 50,000 there's already guidelines on that and uh, at least to where I was brought up to speed recently and then uh, we, the, the second round of PPP is ready to go you know we've just applied for I think it's 475,000 bucks and uh, that's really going to help us uh, you know get through this uh, this 2021 because it's it's tougher than last year yep yeah, we already applied also for the, the, the new PPP and we have not been notified about, uh, you know, we did everything and we have our accountant that's working and staying on top of it. But to Jimmy's point, you're right. You got you don't know what, how it's going to impact on the taxes, but there is something out there um, regarding that. And I, uh, let me, let me find out and I will put it in the chat. Thank you. We'll give it to the deadline is March 31st, so you got to make sure you get you, you get in there. I mean, este, no, you know, look, see, what's the worst thing that could happen is reject you. I mean, yeah. spend spend one day, eight hours is worth it. The return of investment is worth it. Yeah. It'll help your business. 
Yeah, so um, Betty, you were talking about the micro banks. Do you have, do you use any of them um, for you or do you have any success stories? There's a question about if we have any successes that we want to share. Yeah, there are success. I'm sorry, Raul. There are no. success stories. I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, there are success stories. Uh, I use Chase. Uh, that's our bank. Um, I've been using Chase for a long time. So I didn't go to a micro bank. I did on this. I, I did. I started applying because I had not heard from them for a long time while everybody else was getting it. Uh, but there are success stories. I know that um, my some of my colleagues from the Women's Council were very successful with small micro banks. And I will find out again those banks. I know MNT is one. Uh, they're probably smaller banks within your community, um, but I will find out. And yes, they were very successful and these are pretty new or they didn't have a lot of um, uh, history with banks. And so um, I will certainly share it with Laura that she could then um, send it to everyone else. Thank you. Thank you for that. So I will also mention that Ryan from, you know, from the Q&A saying that um, please see Kevin meet Kevin on YouTube. He has a lot of information about the grant and the PPP. So that would be another resource that is being offered by one of our, by Ryan that is participating here today. So, all right, I think we are ready. Hey, Raul, I would like to say, uh, Go ahead. I just want to say one thing with the PPP. Uh, mi gente, el pueblo across the United States, please uh, make sure whoever is going to be helping you with your PPP is the person that's qualified and uh, able to fill out your PPP. You know, that we have a responsibility as business owners to make sure that we're not falsifying information, that we're truthful. Uh, because a veces, you know, por falta de información y por falta de, ignora de you know, el, el, la ignorancia, we end up sometimes, you know, choosing the right, wrong people, right? And so I've had some business choose the wrong people. They, they thought they were going to get the PPP, pero they didn't follow through, or estas personas no sabían lo que estaban haciendo or they falsified que ponieron que eran americanos cuando realmente no eran. Eso es una violación federal. So, por favor, mi pueblo, um, you know, make sure that you're, you're choosing the right people to help you, okay? Make sure that, because that at the end of the day, you're responsible. Muchas gracias. No, that, that, was a, that was a good point. Very, very well taken. So, so, okay, we're ready for the second part of this amazing conversation we're having here this afternoon. Again, the topic is recover your business. And we just went through um, targeting your reopening plan. So we're moving now to uh, workforce planning, right? So you have to open, but you know you may have challenges with your workforce. So um, Jimmy, to you. So you were talking about the diversity within your workforce. So tell us more about your planning process to get that workforce in place. Well, a lot of it was. You know, I didn't know that the workers weren't going to come back to work or some of them that were scared, right? And um, on top of that, you know, the way that people used to call in sick, ya sabes, eh, you know, hay pleito con la esposa o el esposo, los muchachos estaban peleando, estaban enfermos, you know, you, you wake up in the morning, he said, I'm no cansado, I'm going to call in, no, hey, I'm sick, I can't go to work, you know, I ate something bad. So what I like, wait a minute, it's not just like how you were before, like what happened, what symptoms are you cho showing? And so... People would get upset about that, but, you know, we had to follow protocol, unemployment benefits collapsing. I'm seeing my people not being able to eat, and so I'm concerned about that. Uh, and on top of that, not only was it corona, but it was also the devastation of the fires. We, where jobs were getting shut down, we, you know, we, so it was stop and miss. My, all my jobs were wanting to get done at the same time because since we hadn't worked a certain amount of time, every, everything got kind of collided with sequencing. So I had to get more workers because now they're wanting this job done. I hadn't pre-planned for that. Now I'm buying tools for, I had my job sequence. Now I got to buy tools, every, every other job that fell behind. Um, you know, and then on, you know, stress for my team, you know, stress for me, uh, mask politics started playing again. No, okay, this is a made up thing. Okay, no sé qué tanto. I'm not going to wear the mask or coming down half nose, you know? And so, it was just incredible. And then I, on top of that, the social uh, unrest and the civic disobedience on the streets in Seattle also shut down my job. So I had all these jobs, not only was it Corona because there were scares of Corona, but we had the fire, we had the, you know, the social unrest and then uh, sick family, you know, hey, if their children are sick, the wife, they, you know, they got, they got to make sure they go home. So one of the things that we started having to do, okay, scenarios. And one of the things is bringing my staff in, because at first you'll stop, no, I see vamos a hacer esto. But then I go, we come back, I'm going, okay, well, we don't want to be, you know, 
over restrictive. What does the law say? And so we start looking at CDC, Department of Labor and Industry, the county. Other, and then we started seeing that other companies had different policies. So now, not only do we have to develop our policy, but now we have to follow the policy of who we have a contractual obligation. So what we started doing is we started assigning. So we have somebody that oversees just COVID, somebody that oversees just safety, uh, somebody that's doing the marketing, somebody that's doing the applications. So there's there's been a study that's been said that, you know, Latinos operating budget is a lot more than their counterpart whites. And so you know, I believe that because the reality is if we continue to spend more than what we're making, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to end up in trouble. And uh, so what we ended up doing is also figuring out as we go to the next part, how do we stabilize our workforce? How do we make sure they're coming to work? How do we make sure we, you know, we talk about being strict, uh, but at the same time being understanding because they're stressed out, families are stressed out. And so we've gotten there now. Everybody, like the other day, my foreman gets to the job. He's not feeling very well. He didn't go to the job site. He, he went right away to get a Corona test. Uh, to come back, you know, the next day. And so now, you know, we've gotten to that point where everybody knows about the masks. You know, everybody's taking, you know, it, it, they have, everybody knows the procedures. Our Spanish speaking people, we got everything translated. And so now we know where we need to send them. They already, we got an address to them. So every week, every Friday, we put a what's going on with uh, coronavirus. What's going on in Los Angeles? What's going on in Chicago? What's going on in New York? And then uh, we talk all tips about how to, you know, make sure they're staying safe. So that's kind of some of the things we've implemented to really uh, make sure that our staff is not stressed out and just, you know, just uh, concerned about their safety as well. Let me unmute myself because I was muted there for a moment. <laughs> I, I love that, Jimmy, how you were able to yourself pivot. Yeah, you needed to be more flexible and you need to be more understanding to really make sure that your business was continuing to run, but at the same time, accommodate the needs of your workforce to make sure, you know, they were heard. And at the same time, you were supporting them uh, in this time. So, uh, Betty, anything that you want to share, given you are in a different, you know, in a different um, industry, right? And, um, you know, perhaps you dispatching the technician. So maybe the, the, work, the workload was lowered. Uh, any anything that you did to not forload or eliminate some of your employees and how you did that planning process? Sure. Um, so in the beginning, uh, right in March, uh, since our employees were doing a lot of the work in New York City, um, they couldn't go into the city. Most of the buildings were closed. And of course, they were afraid. They don't want to go into New York. Uh, that was the epicenter of uh, of a lot of the this uh, the, the corona. So what we did is to keep the employees um, uh, working because of the PPP loan. You, you know, I couldn't furlough them. I couldn't lay them off. So um, we offered training. So we did a lot of training because we, our employees have to be trained on OSHA training, uh, first aid, emer uh, you know, on technology. So in order for us to stay ahead of the curve, because, you know, everything was going to open up, business will come back. Um, we're going to have to be back out in the field. So this is a perfect time for us to get all the certifications and the training. So that was what we did there. Um, and we also then, uh, as Jimmy alluded to, we had to redefine and develop new processes based on the venues and the customers in uh, requirements to go into buildings. So you had to make sure that a, uh, everything was fully automated so that at any point in time, our employees can go in and see, uh, I'm going into this building in Manhattan. Here are the guidelines. This is what I have to do. You go to a different building in um, Connecticut. That's a different guideline. So um, one of the things that we always kept our employees uh, abreast of, of the uh, of what was happening and, um, and, and made sure that they had everything that they needed to go into any play, any work environment and be safe. Um, you know, so that's kind of what we did uh, for the employees. But I think that time frame that that um, that we were um, uh, in a quiet mode, it gave us time to kind of retool, if you will. Uh, and I will say pivot, but a dear friend of mine says swivel. So we kind of ramped up our R&D and not rip off and duplicate, but really research and development where, you know, it, it was slow, you know, in the beginning it was slow, 
um, doing the R&D and developing new products, but this gave us the time to come up with our own products. So we developed a technology and um, you know we uh, concentrate our efforts and our workforce to uh, get patents on our technology, introduce them into pilots around the country. And so we expanded our marketing then uh, post pandemic. So today we have several pilots ongoing that incorporates our technology along with AI platforms, artificial intelligence to assist companies in making decisions based on real time data that for energy consumption and improved customer experience. So a lot of these technologies that I mentioned earlier are utilized in um, in uh, smart cities, smart buildings. And uh, I think the, the great part is now uh, our technology is certified FirstNet uh, or hasn't officially been, um, but it passed all the tests. And that's something that's critical for our public, um, our, uh, uh, the um, you know, police department, fire department, uh, so it was, uh, so that gave us time to get into something new, uh, in addition to con continuing what we're doing before, but, and, and ensuring our employees had all the training and experience that they need to excel because all of our employees, all of our techs are all minorities. They're, um, African-American, they're Hispanic, they're Asian, they're, um, a disabled vet. Uh, so we have, uh, I think we checked all the boxes, LGBT. So uh, I'm proud of the fact that we are a very diverse company and it represents who we are. You want know, a thought on, on this, Raul, was uh, when, so when I uh, appointed my officer for safety and she does contract and she was doing COVID, um, you know, I have millennials that work for me. So the millenn millennials, oh, I'm, I'm young. A mí no me hace nada de esto, right? So I said, pero, you know, me vas a matar a mi mamá y a mi tío. I mean, you know, ¿qué pasa aquí? And this is my own son who's 24. You know, my daughter's 18. They were listening. But then all of a sudden, you know, he wanted to go on vacation, right? So what ended up happening is I go, hey, pues, if you go on vacation, the rules say that you, you can't come back to work until, I think it was a one week or 14 days. Entonces, este, uh, the, off the safety officer comes and tells me, hey, you know, sabes de qué? Well, I hope you're not going to make special privileges for your son. Le dije, not at all. <laughs> you're the officer. You set the guidelines and it is what it is, right? So here in our, in our uh, company, you know, nobody's better than no one here. Todos estamos iguales, right? So it doesn't matter whether I have the title, somebody has a title. We have to have titles because of the responsibilities of our companies. But al mismo, al mismo tiempo, is, it was awesome to see that. And so my son had to make a decision. He was going to go. Lo, lo, lo que pasó es de que se enfermó su amigo de Corona, so ya no fue, he didn't end up going, right? Pero even having that relationship with your family, your friends, es como mi mamá. Pero no, se miran saludables, no se miran enfermos, mom. It's COVID. No, no se tienen que ver enfermos. I mean, you know, it's, so a lot of the stuff was also with the businesses, right? Because I'm the mayor of a city, so I started getting these calls. Este, ¿Qué hacemos aquí, alcalde, para abrir otra vez? And there was no information. Not even, you know, the city was trying to get information in Spanish. And remember, 25% Latino in my community. No, que, you know, this, que esto, and then, you know, and, and then as things started progressing, el pueblo started, el, el los, our, our children started getting affected because it started to get emotional. Because now mom and dad, they have to go to work. The kids are at school. It just started building stress. And then on top of that, when we had the CARES Act money come out, I want to make sure that money was distributed as it was, as the, uh, as, the, as the makeup of our community. I'm happy that the council said that's what we're going to do. And so when we seen the re numbers and the reports of the money that had gone out, because we ended up doing two, um, two uh, 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 monies that we gave companies, one for 5000 one for 2000 I'm so happy that when I saw the report, it was really everybody, right? And so that, to me, was something that was very, very happy. About. I was very, very happy about that. Thank you, Jimmy. I, I want to... Um you know, um, make a point about something that was critical that Betty said earlier, and I'm going to go back to you, Jimmy, as well. So um, I don't know if you guys were paying attention, but, you know, she took the time, right, when the time was quiet, to really excel in some of her, you know, perhaps, you know, capabilities that she wanted to do for so quite some time, and she did that opportunity then, right? So what I'm saying there is sometimes, you know, Ramiro articulated at the beginning of the session is, don't give up, keep fighting, right? Nosotros somos luchadores, pa'lante. So, so when that happens, because you sometimes didn't get the contract, that is the time you need to learn 
what happened that you know didn't lead, lead you to the contract so you could excel and enhance those capabilities so when the next go around comes you are ready to go so i appreciate that betty was sharing that you know she took you know uh, her people to osha training she started to enhancing her you know her marketing collateral and all of that good stuff so i think that's important right so you know sometimes look at those you know, um, opportunities to continue to excel on your business and, and the foundations and the operations, whatever the case may be. So, so Jimmy, um, when we're, you know, talking, getting ready for this, you mentioned something that, you know, resonated with me was, you know, you hire, and I think you said it earlier, you hire people that are smarter than you. And, you know, like, you know, going back to that mar marketing component, tell us more about how the plan that you have going on for your business. And I'm sorry that you don't have the background, but I want you to tell the, the story about your company name, how it came out. That, that is so powerful because I think people need to know. You know, uh, as I told you, you know, my, I don't think I started this off. And, you know, my uh, dad died of a drug overdose in Burien, Washington. And, you know, I always uh, was embarrassing to be the son of a drug addict. But it was when I ran for office, I told all my friends, they said, okay, I've been lying to you all. My dad did not die of a heart attack. He died of a drug overdose. Entonces, este, yo estaba dormido y mi papá siempre me decía, hey, mijo, si se van a hacer las cosas, se van a hacer ahora, man, no mañana, vato. And so, uh, my dad died at 48, so yo, yo había nombrado mi compañía J&M Development. Y luego voy al internet y dijo, mira, ya se me llevaron mi nombre. Entonces, because I wasn't, you know, I was still taunting the idea of having my own business, right? Because yo en mi mente dije, no, no tengo dinero, no tengo crédito, ¿cómo le voy a hacer? So then what, is, what ended up happening is, I'm in bed because I knew I wanted to change the name of my company from JM Development. It had to be A, it had to be in Spanish. And nombre agarré el diccionario to get A's. And it, todos tenían website de todas las palabras que me gustaban. And then me recuerdo que me dijo mi papá, because it was right before um, the holidays, and, me, and I started remembering, I started feeling guilty because I was in bed. <laughs> and he said, hey, si lo vas a hacer, vale más que lo hagas ahora. And so then, dije, oh my, I'm wondering if ahora is taken. Y no, nadie tenía el nombre ahora construction. Yo dije, wow, so, it, you know, it's a cool name. You know, we have a, a logo that this is, this, you know, it's about safety because safety is a boring subject. Pero, you know, so what I said is, yo quiero un, un sign que diga, que se hable de safety, pero que también sea uh, algo que para que las personas no, no vayan a ser este, I'm trying to see si lo encuentro aquí, que no se vayan a ser lastimadas. So, as you can see here, it says, ahora has safety glasses, gloves, boots, and a hard hat. He said, safety first, sin miedo. And so to me, you know, that's what it is. Aquí estamos y no nos vamos y nos vamos, les avisamos y, y no tenemos miedo, ¿verdad? But we got to be safe on it. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, I really love that, that slogan because it says, it says a lot, it says a lot about, you know, what makes you, what makes you you, right? And I think, you know, hearing, hearing here comments, you know, on, on the Q&A, you know, thank you for being honest. You know, um, you know, being honest is, is a beautiful thing. And I think that will take us, you know, to higher places. So there's nothing about be a shame of being Latino or Hispanic. Who, you know, who we are, who we are. And, you know, they don't like it too bad. Right, Betty? Right. That's right. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> All right. So um, any questions from the audience regarding, um, you know, the workforce planning? So we heard a lot about you know, getting people, you know, aligned to, you know, different functions that may not be required. Uh, you heard Jimmy said they were following, they had somebody following the CDC guidelines. He has somebody working on communications where they were keeping the workforce, you know, abreast on, you know, uh, what was happening in the surrounding states that they operate. So uh, you heard Bertie how she started to reposition herself on training her, her workforce in getting, you know, different things, trainings done and the marketing done as well. Um, so in, in our particular case, I, I'll tell you from a corporate America standpoint, uh, often we had town hall meetings. We actually had one this week. So town hall meetings to where we have, as a, as a pharmaceutical company that I represent, you know, we have the science and we always said it from the beginning, we need to follow the science. So we had a chief patient officer and our, and, our, and our head of uh, um, employee health, you know, always coming in to addressing the employee base, giving us the, their perspective on what was happening, the importance of social distancing, of hygiene, and, you know, covering your face, 
what was the plan of the corporation to really open? As you know, we produce medicine, so we need to uh, provide those medicines to those that need it, right? Even though things were closed, we still needed to, um, to produce those medications. So there was the scientists, there, there was that, you know, essential workforce that needed to go back. So we were able to get, you know, safety in place, like Betty said, on her, on her corporation, on our plants. And, you know, all those measures were in place. So to her point, we haven't had any outbreak ourselves. Uh, yes, we had had some COVID, you know, employees that had COVID, but, you know, you know, keeping the, the you know, responsibility first and making sure that they're reporting that and all that good stuff. Uh, we haven't had any outbreak, so that, that's great. And also, when we, you know, have to come back, we would do that in phases. It's not like everybody will come back. So we want to take all the precautions. We're going to continue to follow CDC guidelines, as Jimmy was articulating, and we would also follow local, you know, government, you know, you know regulations, because that's important. Because, you know, if, if we have a plan in North Carolina and we have one in New Jersey, you know, government are not following the same guidelines, so we need to follow what they're saying in order for us to get our employee back in into those uh, buildings. So uh, those are the things that on our side that I can share uh, that we had done to get, you know, to get the planning going, you know, keeping people informed, making sure that, you know, uh, they know risk associated with not following the right directions and, you know, getting prepared and continue to be doing, doing a bit, uh, um, business as usual, right? So we have, I can work anywhere, right? So do that and then find ways that I can continue to provide you the access. So um, last year, uh, we were able to do a business opportunity fair where we met 1,100 suppliers in one day. So we were able to bring category managers to meet with you suppliers and, and make sure that you, know, they, that you know that we were not going anywhere, that you knew that we were important to you, that you were important to us, and at the same time to make that connection that is so important to continue to get that business development going. So um, anything from, um, from the audience in terms of this topic? Yes, actually, well, uh, I know Henry is here saying uh, to follow up on Jimmy's story, here's a quote from Mark Twain, always do right, this will gratify some people and astonish the rest. So thank you so much for sharing that, uh, Henry. Um, and then what advice will you give yourself as a youth thinking about starting a business and becoming an entrepreneur? Biggest lesson you have learned. So I will leave that up to, to each of you, uh, if Raul, Jimmy, or Betty, whoever wants to start first, but I think this is an excellent advice to a person that just wants to start a business and it's young and with all this future, right, in front of them. Jimmy, you wanna go first? Okay. Uh, gracias, este, you know, uh, Carlos Ortiz, first of all, thank you for getting online. Uh, I know you're running a successful business in Tacoma, Washington. And, uh, you know, here's a, an individual, you know, that calls and I think the best is, you know, what he's an example, right? So what he does is he picks up the phone, hey, Jimmy, este, como estas? How's it been? And just having an associate, being part of an association, like, you know, like I, when I started on the part of National Minority Contractors Association, part of the U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, uh, part of the Chamber of Commerce that are locally. I belong to several trade organizations. Uh, but at, at the, al final del día, en el me gusta estar, where we can be real, right? And we got to figure out quién tiene la experiencia de esto. Como ahorita con Betty, ahorita lo estamos conociendo, yo sé que ella me puede ayudar. Aquí tenemos a Raúl, tenemos a Laura, right? So, so what part of the association can you meet? Porque lo que pasa con nosotros a veces es que, no, pues no la encuentro, ni en la guayá, y no, no sé a dónde fue, y se me olvidó la fecha, pero, y les, y les das la información para que lo lean, no, que no, bueno, Dime, o tienes, tienes eh, me a leer, o no puede leer, you know, yo, yo cuando miro todo en inglés, es like, oh, you know, so I, I go a mija or mijo, or, you know, I find somebody, para que me dejen saber qué es lo que está ocurriendo. Another thing is for, make sure you're okay. careful with how much you buy. Like, everybody wants the big job. I want the big job. Entonces, 99.9% of the time, they want to put, let's do the little ones so we know how to do the paperwork, para que no se van a tener problema. And then, <clears throat> what's more risk? Look, if you have a million dollars in the bank, and take on as much risk as you want. But if I have $100 in the bank, I only want to take at least 20 to 10%, you know, risk on my money. Now, if I want to really get crazy and be a real entrepreneur, que I can, I'm, I know I'm going to lose everything. And there is times that I do that. And, but it's always good to get advice, you know, find mentors. 
Fine Trade Association, read YouTube, you know, read newspapers, read manuals, because uh, you're, you know, if everybody would like to read, nobody, we'd probably live in a different world. And, and you know, the most dangerous leader, and we've just seen it with our own eyes, is an uneducated, uninformed, ignorant leader. It's the worst thing you can have for your staff and for our country. I was going to say, uh, Raul, um, I think, you know, first of all, you have to have a plan, you know, so if you're starting out a business, uh, you have to have a plan. And I don't know what, uh, what area that, that they're thinking of, but <clears throat> to Jimmy's point, understand the industry that you're pursuing, go to industry group meetings if you can. Um, <clears throat> I would say the uh, critical thing uh, is uh, use technology. Right. Technology is the best thing you could start off with because you're going to have to do a lot of things by yourself. Right. You're the, the, the Xerox person. You're putting together proposals. You're going to be putting together business plans. You're going to be putting together um, going. You know, so you got to have the infrastructure. Um, and, and there are so many tools out there uh, that are available through, you know, Google, Microsoft, what, you know, there is a lot of tools out there that makes it a lot easier versus when I started out my business, right? Um, develop a website, you know, make sure that, um, that you go to the different organizations. Again, I can't stress it enough, SBA, MBDA, SCORE, um, you know, your chambers, right? The chambers, a lot of them have their own, um, I know Dallas-Fort Worth has one, especially just helps uh, startups, you know, the, uh, and we have all kinds, bodega owners, you know, and, and it comes in all shapes. So they help everyone. So you don't have to be big. Um, you can look big, right? You can look real big with the internet, with your website, you, you know, but you got to have a plan and you got to make sure you understand that industry. And, and one of the things that I think I wish I had done earlier was invested, um, in my own building, for example. I think if I took all the monies I spent on leases, um, I could have uh, owned quite a bit. So, uh, you know, make sure that uh, once you see the success, invest in yourself, invest in your company, um, because uh, without, you know, take a little bit of risk. Uh, and if you're young, hey, the world is in front of you. There's so many ways that organizations can help you and that's their job. So uh, that would be my, my coaching. Raul, and also the uh -huh. restauranteros. I want to send a message to the restauranteros, right? Because restaurants are the ones that have taken a big hit. Right? And those are where we've lost the cooks, the dishwashers, the servidoras, este, los que, you know, the people who are cleaning, the construction. But, eh, you know, look, the, there is no question that we're in a different time in the world. Not only are we having economic wars across the country with trade wars in that, but you either, you, you know, they say if, if you sit, you rust, okay? Uh, you know, sometimes they say if it's a squeaky wheel, grease the wheel to not allow the squeaking to go on and on. And so what ends up happening is that I'm in my mind, hey, si está haciendo squeak, quita la llanta y ponle una llanta nueva, hombre, un nuevo bearing. ¿Para qué anda uno con el ruido que le vas a echar aceite? Se termina el aceite cada tres meses. So, but the reality, look, some of the businesses, what they've done, like the smaller businesses, que they can't have any clients in. Miraron a ver cómo pueden usar el social media, YouTube, Instagram, you know, visuals. Porque la gente cuando mira la comida, mira las fotos, le da ganas. So, hey, ¿sabes qué voy a llamar, right? And then también, uh, in Burien, what we did is uh, we had the, the Bure, uh, Discover Burien comenzar a poner cosas en español, en inglés, las caras de los negocios, their stories, ¿verdad? Pero a veces nosotros... No, no, no queremos hablar de nuestras historias o lo da pena, pero siempre va a tener que ser marketing. Business is always changing, ¿verdad? Entonces, some, people, some restaurants, you know, you could do, there's just nothing in the world you can do because we're in a pandemic and desafortunadamente you're going to be impacted and some businesses are going to close. Question is, if they come back, how are we going to support them as la comunidad, as el pueblo? You know, here there was a, somebody had broken into someone's business here, se les habían llevado the tent outside, pues el pueblo got together, we did a GoFund account and they were able to get the money and stay to survive, right? So these are little mom and pop businesses. Y para el pueblo, tenemos que apoyarnos entre uno y otro, right? It, when uh, Betty talk about DBE and MBE, esos son acronyms para los contratistas que son min minorías because the, el gobierno estatal and the federal government uh, tiene que, te, pues, di, aunque tú te mires en el espejo latino, tiene que estar certificado con un papel que eres latino que tú estás manejando tu propio negocio. Entonces, 
Eso, that's the certificates we get as minority businesses. Pero miren, es importante. Yo, yo cuando fui a Miami, me encantó mucho los cubanos, porque ellos entendían que no tenían patria, no tenían tierra. Entonces, cuando llegaron aquí a Miami, dijeron, esta este, este, este es nuestra tierra. They were rejected because they didn't speak the language. And then all of a sudden they started LBA, Latin Builder Association, que el cubanito hizo el otro cubanito, que se, se me quiebra el carro, que se me, you know, entonces, you know, it was beautiful, right? Because they were able to uh, politically create a stance porque no tenían país para irse para atrás. Entonces, mis padres de Guatemala siempre soñaban que se iban a ir para atrás a Guatemala. Well, I don't want to go back to Guatemala. I'm an American. I want to be here. Entonces, la realidad es de que we need to make sure how do we not only start doing business across borders, but also how do we, you know, create, work. Somos 68 million Latinos in the United States. 34 million can vote. And so what it is, is que necesitamos el, el sistema cambiado. And so we got to change. Remember, you sit, you rest. Yeah, th thank you, Jimmy. Um, I don't know if you're talking about me, but it's okay. I'll, I'll take, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't do the Cubanito, Cubanito. I had to go and work for Corporate America. But, you know, one day, who knows, I can open my own business. But I think I, what, I, what I would like to say also when on that process of opening your business, definitely I agree with the plan, right? We have to have a plan. And number two, do the research, do the market research, you know, depending on the industry, you're talking about, you know, the restaurant, right? So think about the area you want to set up your restaurant, you know, who is that community in that, in that, in that neighborhood, you know, what's your competition look like? Because that would, that would determine what type of, you know, what type of food you're going to sell that will determine, you know, if you have the right clientele that can come in and secure your revenue. So that's important. And I know there's a, it's a question here on the chat about, you know, the food service industry, you know, as we all know, has been hit hard, really hard, right? So, you know, some of the clients of this supplier, uh, they, they have closed their business, or other ones have changed the business model. So what, what I say there is, what is that new business model? And what is your new business model? And how you align to that new business model? And find new ways in which you could actually, you know, support that new business model. So I don't know if you, Jimmy or Betty, had anything else to add in there because, You know, that's what my I would say, right? From a corporate standpoint, I think you need to you need to swivel, right, or pivot to make sure that you 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 remain relevant. And again, I think Jimmy touched on this. You know, if it's a small, take it. It doesn't matter. You, that's how you grow. That's how you learn. I have so many suppliers that have had declined to participate on request for proposal. Oh, that's too small. Really? That's too small. So how are you going to learn? how we do right. business. And then if, if you miss that opportunity, chances are you will never get it again. So, you know, you know, it, it's just important that, you know, you take those opportunities and, and learn from those opportunities. So right. a lot of, a lot of the restaurants obviously have takeout. I think that's how they maintain and survive. I think another thing is co-location or co-sharing, right? Um, uh, some restaurants are all, were only open for breakfast and lunch. And if you're one that does dinner, You know, you pay them rather than having your own, go and utilize their facility. So there's a lot of that collaboration going on. And as you know, Hello Fresh and all this other stuff, maybe doing something like that, especially for the Latino community, uh, because our foods are different. And um, I think what, what that does, because remember now many parents are home, not only doing their own work, but also being teachers. Right. Uh, you know, so now they have double and triple amount of work to do. And so um, and because the day doesn't end nine to five anymore. Now the days are much longer because you're not traveling. So um, I think that helping out and ha giving people the opportunity to um, I'll make the food for you all, you know, and uh, I think that's, you know, so now you could start a whole Spanish line. Right. I know there's a lot of different things out there, but I would, you know, And especially si vivimos en barrios y comunidades que son gente como nosotros, podemos hacer la misma cosa. And you could start franchising it. Think about it, you know? I mean, it's thinking out of the box. I mean, the, the world is, you could do whatever you want to do now, you know? Um, be bold, I would say. Uh, be brave, be bold, be brave. So, excellent. Okay. So, we, we are moving on really nicely. So, uh, again, you're here listening to Recover Your Business Session. Uh, brought to you by Wells Fargo. Um, so we have been talking about, you know, targeting reopening plan for your business. We also just uh, finished talking about, you know, the workforce planning, how do you need to pivot, how you need to change, how you need to prepare, 
uh, your workforce to make sure that you're fulfilling, you know, your contractual obligations and you have the employees placed in the right, um, you know, uh, function within your business to make sure that you continue to deliver. So now we're moving into a last, I can't believe that we're, this is a last, this has been great. Um, a last part of our conversation, now we're going to be talking about, you know, the customer acquisitions, how we are putting a strategies together to make sure that, you know, we're, re we're remaining relevant, right? Because I think that we were just talking about that when we talked about the example of, you know, some of the clients are closing and some of the other ones are cha changing the business model. So now let's, let's dive into a little bit more. So, um, Betty, going to you, you know, what are some of the strategies that, you know, you're using to retain or even acquire uh, new customers? You're muted. Came up. <laughs> uh, so companies are, um, you know, we talk about this a lot within our different organizations, but you need to be business ready. You need to be prepared because um, if we're not, we're going to miss the boat because business will is coming and, and they are out there. So what we're doing right now is, uh, number one, going after customers that were customers in the past and maybe fell off the list or are not acquiring a lot of uh, uh, products or services. So we're going back after them to, to get them reengaged. Another is, is to ensure that you have a clear vision um, and be business ready with your employees. Your employees are your key assets. They're the boots on the ground. You have to make sure that they have the vision and they know exactly what we need to do. Um, uh, we saw the plans that we laid out last year, 2020, in the beginning of the year. You know, everybody does their, their plan for the year, three-year plan, whatever. Well, that went right out the window right after March. That was gone. Um, you know, so there's a great tool out there. And I'm part of a, a, a group through EY and the Michigan Minority Council, which is called Mastermind. And uh, one of the things that they have us do is the 12-week year. This is a uh, this is planning your year tw in 12 week chunks because it's very hard to have a plan for the full year. And then you say, have things like this, like the pandemic that, uh, that destroyed everything. And, and it's, more, uh, it's more palatable. It's easier to do when you're looking at it three months at a time. So I started with my employees and you're starting to see the rewards of that that looking at it in bite sizes, right? Because then you feel good. I see the results. Uh, when you have a whole year plan, you're chasing everything. Be focused, stay in that one quarter and get your employees to start doing the same thing. Another area is to have teaming agreements in place with uh, like-minded, just as Jimmy uh, said earlier, right? Um, with other companies. And what I'm doing right now is really doing that because we do installation around the country. Well, I don't have resources across the country. However, you can find partners across the country because we know through the USHCC, I know other Hispanic companies that do what I do. Um, and then the others, WeBank and, and MSDC. And now you start setting up um, these different hubs where you can utilize them and say, okay, here's the scope of work. How much are you going to charge me in Seattle? How much are you going to charge me in Atlanta? How much are you going to charge me in, um, you know, Wisconsin? Uh, so it's doing things like that so that you're already getting ready and you can really grow and scale very quickly. Um, you have to have a digital recovery plan. Uh, that is, you have all your marketing, your collateral updated. So now you, when you, now that you have time, have it all ready so that you can go, yeah, my customer call, here, here's my capability statement. Here's my this. Um, ha, that's the time for us to do it. And that's exactly what we've done, uh, especially with all the new technology. And branch out to other industries. So I was always predominantly focused on uh, telecom, uh, but it's fungible. What we do in telecom, we're realizing it's doable in the utilities. It's doable for large enterprises. It's doable in the oil industry. Um, technology is very fungible and it goes across all levels. And so um, automotive was one. You know, and everybody will say, well, when was the last time you did something in automotive? I've been driving since I was 17. I know cars, okay? <laughs> so don't be afraid, you know? Um, uh, especially if you have the technology, you have the infrastructure, you have smart people. Um, you can do a lot of different things with your same business. 
You just have to find where there's similarity and, um, you know, warehousing, logistics. Yeah, uh, I can warehouse anything. The only thing that's different is food, if it's perishable. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of things that you can warehouse. So um, I, I, those are my uh, thoughts, uh, uh, Raul, on um, making sure that, uh, that we have the right customers and that we're pursuing the right customers. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for bringing that book live. I think Laura just put the link on the chat. Also, we had Carlos share another great book. It's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. So that's another fantastic read. So I recommend um, the viewers, uh, the listeners to really, you know, pay attention to those because that's great. Um, I'm getting a lot of thank you, Betty, for that great advice. So Jimmy, to you. So what strategies, you know, how you use or you're planning to use to acquire, you know, new, new customers? Well, I was looking at the fact that uh, anybody born from 1946 to 1964, it's about 71.6 million baby boomers in the country. Uh, Generation Xers, right? There's, which would be anybody born from 1965 to 1980, right? We're currently about 41 to 56 years old. There's about 65 Point two million. Generation Y, there's actually several Generation Ys because, you know, they've been going in different ages, but there's 72.1 million. That's between 1981 to 1994, 96, right? So they're currently between five, 25 and 40. Generation y, uh, Y1, they're about 31 million. Y2, 42 million. Z generation, which is right now from the age of six to 24, 68 million. So what I started looking at is I knew the numbers, right? And numbers don't lie. You know, if you look at numbers and you say, okay, if each one spends a dollar with me, what does that look like? So then uh, I remember that, uh, well, I can't do the one-on-ones. I can't use my personality, my smile, my, porque I can't meet with anybody. And Zoom is not the same. So yeah, well, what can I do with my business? So right away, we, we had a newsletter and the newsletter that we had is just traditional newsletter, but we brought somebody. So I had to go back to my staff and figure out, okay, what are, what, you know, what are my staff's strengths to make sure that I'm like going to the next, next era. And so I already knew when I started my business, I want to have baby boomers because they know what's up. They, they've been in the, they've been in the industry for a long time. And then I knew technology was coming, but I couldn't push technology on my baby boomers. They don't like that, right? So, and then I got people like myself, the X, or we're always trying to make sure that baby boomers and the millennials aren't fighting because the millennials call out the baby boomers because they can't use their phones and they can't use their computers. And told you, okay, wait, wait a minute. We're all going to be a team here. We're a transformational leadership here. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we bring in the baby boomers, they're mentoring my millennials, and then we're going to start doing the transition. But what happened is that transition started faster because this new lezer came out, my son, who's 24, you know, he's my general foreman, and then, you know, my superintendent, and then uh, my project manager and engineer, and then my staff, so he put on, like, this coat, and there were this newsletter was going to go out, and then I'm like, oh, no me gusta esa newsletter, como que, it's just too much out there, pero la mañana me levanté, and I'm going, oh my god, these are the millennials, I love this, like, we are sexy, we are awesome, we're vibrant in construction, anything you can think about, it works in construction, so then, I'm talking to one of them, one of my newest uh, uh, hires, you know, and she has a degree in nutrition. So they go, wow, you know what? I know that now we're going to change in the, our marketing strategy. So I want to make sure I want a 12 month calendar. When are we going to do Instagram? When are we going to do Facebook? When are we going to do Twitter? When are we going to do LinkedIn? How many posting? What's the post is going to be at? Is it going to be about mass? It's going to be about food. It's going to be about technology. It's going to be about praising my mentors. It's going to be about thanking the Hispanic, uh, U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And so I said, but it's not just traditional. Que la gente no le gusta leer, right? Pero you look at the numbers of how many go to YouTube. Said, okay, what we're going to do is I can't afford commercials on TV. I don't know. Tengo dinero, right? I can't afford videos or documentaries. So I hired an African-American uh, Lavoy. Uh, to come out and say, okay, because this individual just had an idea. So you, I don't know if you've gotten to see the 3D modeling when you go into a home and you can see it. Well, I did it in the whole construction building. This is new. It's innovative. You haven't seen the construction. And I brought in my, my people that do my website. I said, hey, this website's not talking to me. It looks like the rest of them. And uh, LinkedIn is not talking to me. It looks like the rest of them. So we're changing that up. And we're going to have a newsletter. It's going to come out six months out of the year. In that newsletter, we're going to, on jobs that we have going on, jobs that we have in the future, 
And on top of that, we're going to talk about uh, health and nutrition. Those, that's different than health and safety. So we want to health and nutrition. We're going to have six um, uh, re recipes because when you're working in construction, you need energy. Y, uh, dar tomando café y cigarros nomás just doesn't cut it. it. It's not good for your health, especially with our Latinos and you know, some of the things that we're seeing with health. So we wanted that to be about food. We wanted it to be about health, about vitamins. And then we want one that's about safety, you know, que no te vas a caer de la escalera, que don't be to the falling edge, que maneja con cuidado. And then there was one about technology, right? What is technology? You know, we as Latinos are being left behind when it comes to technology, you know? And it's like, hello. But if we're not pushing también, then, you know, we're not going to be counted. So my strategy is starting in February. I'm so excited about it. It's the, you know, my new website will be launched. Uh, we'll have the newsletters launched. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we'll have uh, all our, our marketing pieces through uh, Instagram. But on top of that, dije yo, okay, imagine millennials, the numbers I just gave you. I'm Latino. A mí me encanta la música, la cumbia, la salsa y todo, right? Like la comidita, I'm a good cook. Pero la realidad que mis padres son de Guatemala. You know, mis tíos son de México. You know, mis, mis amigos son de Venezuela. Mis amigos son de Colombia. Entonces yo dije, imagine si tu, nosotros pudiéramos tener los millennials de Guatemala, de Salvador, de Venezuela, de Colombia, and the graphic is just different. Eh, the marketing is different. So I'm trying to marry los millennials de los Estados Unidos and hablamos español e inglés y somos latinoamericanos, pero también casar nuestras uh, ancestry, our story, you know, in America and why we're here, right? My parents migrated to Guatemala because the country was destabilized. We had capitalism, communism, and uh, uh, socialism all in one country in Guatemala. And so they were displaced. Entonces, este, I'm so excited to get this launched out because it's something new, something innovative. And so this was created by the baby boomers, the Xers and the millennials. Okay, so I'm gonna R&D that. <laughs> Great idea, I love it, I love not, it. Not research and development, rip that's off right. and duplicate. That's rip off and duplicate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, podcasts are great too, right? Uh, because you want to be considered a thought leader. Y mejor si somos Latinos. And, and I love that because I wanted to start something with my cousin in, in Argentina, a cooking show. So she's cooking there and I'm cooking here. And you could see, you know, um, different types of recipes that, that we can come up with. But, you know, they have so many cooking channels now. But anyway, I love it. Love it, love it. Hey, you could bring one Latino cooking channel. Everybody would love that. Everybody yeah. likes her. Per, That's person. right. We don't have any, right? No. Huh? No, we don't have any, right? Not that I know. They so, only have the shows yeah. in the different, you know, in the Good Morning America or um, Nuevo Dia or um, Despierta America, but I don't think that there's actually a true, true show. And we could uh, do something all different countries. We all cook our dish. Yes. <laughs> that that would be awesome. You, you know, este, Raúl, una cosa que también quería expresar en lo que, que estaba diciendo de esto es that, um, you know, one of the things que yo estaba también mirando, so sometimes we don't want to hire consultants, okay? Uh, you know, yo tengo, un, I got a great writer here. She went to Seattle Pacific University. I mean, she got her master's in total jale, right? But that's not her, that's not her full thing of every day. So yo contraté a alguien que me pueda escribir, right? Porque we want to make sure que cuando estemos al público, cuando vamos a un mercado diferente, that there's no, you know, maybe there's a misspelling of a word. I doubt it. I hope not. And if you do see it on my website, please let me know or punctuation. La otra cosa es también este, you know, the photographer, you know, es como me dice, well, I can go by the camera and tomo una foto. No, 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 espérate. Not 3D. You know, este, you can't even walk through it. Like I got stuff now that V, uh, that you can put on the, the VR. Like a, uh, VR, yeah. And walk through my job. That's, it hasn't been done yet. Entonces, this is going to be at the children's hospital. I already know that they're going to have Ahora Construction's video walking through my job when it was getting constructed, right? So uh, I'm very excited because that's one thing that I see our technology with our children is que ellos tienen la idea. Es como I have uh, my engineer. Le dije, vamos a comprar un 3D printer. He goes, well, what do you want to make? Le dije, I don't want to make anything. What are you going to make? You know, what are you and your, you know, because they're all engineers, they're minorities, they're Latinos, there's, there's Asian and they're African-American. They went, okay, I said, you guys maybe have the billion dollar idea. I'm just going to buy the machine and buy the equipment. I mean, figure, figure it out. I mean, play with it on Saturdays if you want. I'm not paying you for it, but si quieren, aquí está, I'll pay for the electricity. I'll pay for the water. Because lo que pasa es de que we don't have a place for our children and for us stop 
not be working the three jobs, not be working 18 hours or the 20 hours and be creative, you know? Entonces, este, that, this is a time right now, como dijo Betty, para las personas that have some downtime, look, you, it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to get depressed. It's okay to be mad. It's okay to be scared. Pero don't let that cerrarte la mente para no expander tu mente. Como dijo Einstein, la mente que crece a otra dimensión nunca vuelve a ponerse chiquita. Very, very well said. Very well said. So we, we heard about, you know, stay up to date with, you know, um, with the marketplace, right? Stay up to date with your collateral to make sure that it speak to the communities and, and the demographics and, you know, balance that up. It's a, it's a balancing act. And I think Jimmy covered it very well with the statistic he was sharing, right? So, you know, you need to be, you know, intentional and strategic when you're putting up your collateral, your, your, you know, when you're managing your employee base, when you're creating that business plan, when you're pivoting. So I think that's, that's critical and important, right? So um, I think we're going to wrap up this session and I think I'm gonna ask if any of the audience has any um, questions that they would like to ask at this point. I know there was a question earlier um, around Betty or Jimmy, do you guys hold a, a contract with the government? Because there's someone that has um, a contract with the government and, you know, um, they got sick and now, you know, they, they ask who they need to contact um, to show their succession plan on whatever, you know, the gaps are between, you know, the illness to now that they're trying to get back on track. So any piece of um, advice there, uh, if you know, I would say that if it's a if it's a federal contract, there has to be a contract liaison, somebody that owns that contract, right? Um, and again, I don't I don't know what it is, but uh, I would say you go to your contract manager, the um, you know whoever, uh, because every contract has a, a key person that you can contact. Uh, if not, I would highly recommend the utilization of your SBA. Uh, administrator in your region or MBDA, the Minority Business Development Agency. They both are, are tied and know about all the uh, federal contracts and can help you navigate through that. And it depends on what, where you live uh, or where you have your business. But if you're in the Texas area, there's several of them all over. And all you do is uh, go online and that, that would be my recommendation. They say, okay, this is what happened. I've been in the hospital for seven months. I need you to help me. I want to get back. And uh, what are the next steps to make sure that my contract uh, is not delinquent or that they found me in non-conformance or non-compliance? That would be my recommendation. But I don't do a lot of federal government work, but I did hear uh, others talking about it. So, but, but again, I think that's a critical point. Speak up. Don't be afraid of whatever the consequence we need. Because if whatever is a consequence, affirm that consequence and then take action after that. It's similar to us, right? So, you know, during the pandemic, we did a couple of health checks to our suppliers. Some of them remained quiet. Some of them didn't even mention anything. And then when we surveyed them, they were, they were having challenges with their finances. Where, where are you going to tell me? If I don't know what your challenges are, as an advocate on your behalf, a an, an company that I represent, I cannot go and ask the leadership to give you, you know, flexible payment term for three months or, you know, prompt your payment terms to be immediate if you need help. So don't be afraid to speak up if you come up with the truth and then you have an action on how you're going to get better. So, Raul, me gustaría decir algo that brings this to, my, to mind. I've lost five of my friends to coronavirus. Uh, una, me recuerdo uno de mis latinos que me dijo, hey, ¿sabes qué? Jimmy dice, este, me, me, traigo, me, me traen a que me quieren ir a hacer este trabajo allá. Le dije, why don't you open up your own business? Dice, es que no puedo, Jimmy, soy un alfabeto y no hablo inglés. Le dije, ¿cómo no? Le dije, tú puedes abrir tu negocio, tú puedes. So he opened up his business. He came this, last year before he went to Mexico y me dijo, Jimmy, te quiero dar las gracias porque compré mi casa en México, ya tengo mi carro, ya nomás tengo unos cuantos años para irme. Well, ¿Qué pasó? Se vino para atrás de México, se murió en el hospital, pero, you know, hay que hablar con sus esposas o sus familias. No dejen sus negocios without documentos. ¿Quién va a manejar su, su compañía if something happens to you? Here's a mother, here's a wife who has $29,000 in the bank, has contracts, but has no authority to touch the company. Entonces, si no tenemos plan, 
estamos en una pandemia mundial es un, y tenemos que tener un plan porque it could be us, it could be me. Right when this happened, right, right away. Agarré un abogado para que me convence y me muero si no puedo responder, que no quiero que me, que me quiten la máquina, que no quiero transfusión, transfusión de sangre. So hay cosas específicas que yo quiero si algo me pasa. Entonces es interesante esta plática because just like there's sometimes contract, you know, there is help and I'm glad that Betty, I can't add more than what she said because I don't know what happened in the particular situation. Pero I'm getting to numbers, Raúl. This is in Washington, uh, what the growth is from 2010 to 2040, meaning that we're in 30 years, it says this is where we're at. And it says that Latinos are going to grow 100%, 120%. Mixed races are going to be at 180%. Asian, it's at 130%. Black, African-Americans are at uh, 600,000, and uh, that's at 80%. And uh, the white community is only growing at 42%. What does that mean? That's opportunities for our businesses. Those are sheer numbers of growth of population. And I can tell you that the USHCC is in the forefront of that because we have to be. We are the voice of all businesses and we need to make sure that our voices are heard. And that, um, as I said, if there's not room at the table, bring your own chair, my friend, Michelle Robinson. So uh, yeah, you're, you're spot on. We will be the majority diverse group here and Um, and we mean business, and we'll do it in, a, in the best way we can. Como todos latinos, estamos siempre adelante, y no, nothing held back. So. Adelante y sin miedo. Y sin miedo, that's right. Adelante, adelante y sin miedo. miedo. Y aquí estamos, y no nos vamos, y si nos vamos, les avisamos. Sí. <laughs> sí. I love that. So, um, Well, uh, Raúl, sorry, do you have any other questions or any other comments? No, I think I think I didn't see any other questions on the Q&A, and I think we're almost at time. So, yeah, back to you, Laura. This has been a lot of fun. It has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for sharing all your all your expertise. Um, thank you. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Raúl. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you to Wells Fargo for making this webinar possible, for allowing us to have these two hours of wonderful conversation about on how to recover your business. And to all of you for taking the time to join us today. I hope you were able to get a lot of ideas out of this conversation and that you start taking action and implementing them in your business. So don't forget uh, the chance to win the $25 gift card by completing the short one minute survey that I'm planning to send in a few minutes via email. Uh, and um, nothing, remember your feedback is extremely, extremely important to keep bringing relevant uh, content to all of you. So have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so Gracias much.